I always support uh, mobility uh, of art uh, of artists and curators between art residences. So today we have not only those who represent art residences, we have different voices here today. And I think that this discussion will be helpful, will be very useful, and we will talk about such things as territory, as the meeting place. We will speak about the memory images and uh, and the opportunities to um, settle in a particular territory. And we are talking about territorial expansion when we move from territory to territory and observe how before uh, artists arrived there, we had no chance to see those territories. And also we have no um, opportunities to see those territories the way artists see them. And uh, towards the end of our session, we expect a surprise from Anna Kavulina. So let me enumerate our speakers today. So uh, each presentation um, uh, well, shall last uh, not more than 10 minutes so that we have enough time for discussion afterwards. So we will start with our online participant. Uh, is, he, uh, is he here already? And can we see him uh, on the screen? Hello, Anton. Hello. So this is Anton Shamshin. Anton Shamshin is followed by uh, Alexander Kremenitz, who is going to talk about the Arctic Hector. Then we have Daniel Tkachenko. Uh, and uh, he will talk about the um, Altai Biennale. And finally, we have. We'll, we will talk about the uh, art residences of the future. So, Anton, could you please introduce yourself, uh, tell more about yourself, and then switch over to your presentation? Anton has photos that we also ask you to bring on the slide on the screen so that we could have a look at the photos and listen to Anton good morning thank you for inviting me to participate in the session my name is Anton I'm from Murmansk and I would like to tell you about the adventure we started uh, this summer. This is the uh, Terski Berek Art Residence. I would like to tell more about this location. So this is the Murmansk region, Terski district uh, in the southeast, and it has a lot of peculiarities, a lot of features. So first, this is northern nature, northern landscapes. So certain natural features of the landscape. Uh, and it is also the Pomoria culture uh, with its household specifics. So uh, we need to bear in mind that there are two types of Pomoria settlers uh, living along the White Sea in Arhangelsk, in Karelia, and also in the Murmansk region. Let me give you an example. We all know uh, about Murmansk, but uh, unlike the Terski region, Murmansk is only 105 years old, but the uh, Terski territory uh, dates back to the 10th or 11th centuries, or probably even earlier. And uh, well, discussions continue, and some say that this is an even older territory. So this time gap, uh, well, is an important, um, an important territory. 
That is why we decided to establish the art residence there, but probably this was not the primary reason. Originally, we planned uh, just a uh, tour of friends to that territory. Uh, we, as a group of people, we uh, work with the Northern culture for a long time already, and we thought it would be great to travel to the Terski uh, district, to the Terski area, and study its social and cultural aspects, including the history of Pomorje. Uh, it would be wrong to say that Pomorje is on the outskirts, but uh, nevertheless, in terms of distance from Murmansk, it takes five to six hours to get there, and it's a long and difficult uh, way. And when we arrange the open call, many artists who submitted their applications they knew what Terski district is, they knew about its specifics, but they needed help um, in order to get to, to, to that territory, to that area. It's not that easy. Originally, we had no plans to establish a public art residence, just uh, a, a, a trip there. But when preparing for that trip, when talking with the locals, and when we were trying to get some financial support, we realized that, uh, well, it, it, it turns out it's a big project, and that's why we, uh, that's why an idea came to our mind that probably we should establish an art residence. And we had two goals in mind. The first goal is to establish the infrastructure and an opportunity for artists to get there in order to communicate with the locals, to learn more about the Pomorje culture, in order to popularize this beautiful culture, and in order to add some contemporary art uh, techniques to this culture. The second goal is to use the artistic expertise in order to develop the local community and the territory. So in August uh, this year, we launched the pilot. It had a hybrid format. So for a couple of days, we were traveling around the Terski district. And uh, then we settled down in two settlements to live and work there. The Terski district is big and diverse. It consists of multiple settlements. So uh, you, can use, you can have different formats. So as an expedition, or you can stay in a particular settlement for a long period of time to study its specifics. So there are both natural and cultural aspects um, of study, and there are a lot of activists who support uh, the, the, the sites, and there is even some sort of competition, um, or uh, like uh, every group of activists tries to highlight the specifics of this or that settlement. So the art residence lasted for 10 days. And you could stay for 10 days in one settlement and you would have a lot of things to study there throughout that period of time and uh, get ready with a project. Well, uh, we tried not to limit ourselves to certain artistic formats. Um, well, we wanted our artists to come there and arrange various projects. So uh, we had... Uh, well, multiple participants, very different. But let me uh, briefly um, speak about two projects. Could you please now show the picture of the wall which says Umba? I would be grateful if you could do that. The picture with the word Umba on it.
Do you manage? Probably I could demonstrate my screen. Так, и почему-то у меня тоже не хочет это запускаться. For some reason I cannot demonstrate uh, the screen. Probably you can describe what is there in that photo. Так, а сейчас скажите, видно? Видно. Итак, это почему это очень важная фотография? Это So this picture is very important. It was made by Vladimir Anosov, uh, a calligraphic painter. He was one of the participants and he uh, arrived at the art residence and um uh, an educational program was an integral part of the art residence. So, um uh, Every of the four painters who arrived there arranged additional uh, um, master classes and workshops. And this inscription is improvised. It appeared after one of the workshops. Uh, well, it looks well quite simple, quite innocuous but please bear it in mind because i will tell more about it later on then we had two uh, female artists tatiana gladyshova and marina plenina from murmansk and saint petersburg their joint project was a combination of art craft and ecology in the Tersky district uh, there is a huge problem with uh, the with the glass with the window glass uh, we still cannot understand whether uh, this is a local tradition to break glass and throw it away into the uh, local water basins so uh, after spending 10 minutes at the host they gathered about 10 kilograms of glass which evidently spent from 10 to 100 years in the water and they made a collection of home decor together with the locals and currently this collection is exhibited in one of the uh, Umba settlement in the Tersky district. So the problem that we faced, probably not a difficulty, but it was kind of a challenge for us. Uh, so that challenge was about how to establish communication with the locals properly. At every stage, it seemed to us, uh, we promoted that communication. So we were coming while preparing for the art residence. Local activists helped us a lot. Uh, they interacted with us. They helped us to find other people whom we would like to communicate and artists would like to communicate with them. So when that inscription, uh, Umba, appeared as a result of the uh, were uh, as a result of workshop the photo appeared in the local media social media 
and it triggered two um, rivaling, uh, rivaling camps. Then the photos were deleted, but the point was that this photo, after a while, became less important. People just started um, solving problems um, related to how they see the cultural and artistic future of their place. At the same time, it's well, it started a discussion. And the format of the discussion impressed me a lot. I still do not know how to perceive that. Uh, like, so it turned into kind of mutual accusations of each other. Uh, the, the settlement was small and everybody was blaming each other uh, for what they contributed to the development of the local hip hop culture. And uh, so the art residence starts officially in summer 2022. And we're already thinking about how to uh, efficiently communicate with the local community, uh, how to um, bring up more ideas. And we had quite a fruitful work with the activists already, and we were absolutely sure that we covered everyone uh, during the tr tr educational programs, during the workshops, we well, we had a lot of people willing to attend on a daily basis. So unfortunately, we, we even con could not uh, take everyone. The information was widely spread in the social media, and one of the outcomes, well, this inscription on the wall, uh, resulted in such a confrontation in the local community. Am I right to understand that the art residence operates uh, only uh, during the summertime. So far, yes, we are thinking about some other new formats, uh, but the second art residence takes place in summer for 10 days. I think it's important for an art residence uh, to shift from one mode to another. So, for example, when first it starts with uh, traveling around the place and then um, certain discussions arise uh, in Vladivostok at the Zarya Center, we also had a similar project about glass. Uh, there is a bay there and uh, there is a huge uh, heap of garbage and rubbish and all that uh, rubbish uh, well, uh, uh, was dumped into the sea and there is the so-called glass bay and uh, well there is plenty of glass that once uh, had been dumped into the water and for some reason it got into that bay and uh, the amount of glass in that bay is finite uh, because uh, the uh, that waste uh, land was um, closed that is why that that is why probably uh well the, there will be less glass in that glass bay over time so we need to thank anton please stay with us uh, for for the discussion and now i would like to speak another way our, our residences can function um when uh, well the cooperation is more long-term or sustainable sasha the floor is yours thank you hello my name is alexander kremenitz i am responsible for different artistic practices in the barents region in the arctic I was trying to get to know Anton better. Uh, we arrived in the in the Tersky district, but he was not there, so um, I, I couldn't meet him in person. Yesterday, I wrote to him when I learned that he would participate in this session. That's how we finally got acquainted, and I hope that we will continue cooperating. Could you please bring my uh, bring my presentation? Uh, on the screen. Uh, 
В общем, приехала я на север в... I arrived in the north in 2017. I was invited by Nornikel company. They try to uh, arrange different projects in, in the territory where they are present. That's how I got there. So the area that I work in is called uh, Pechinsky uh, uh, district. It is close to Norway. This is where uh, Nord Nickel Company is based. And this is um, the distance to Moscow. So it is 30 kilometers to, uh, to the nearest town and it is about 2000 kilometers to Moscow. So uh, Norway is very close. That's why the relations with Norway um, are very good. So people get married, um, travel across the border. And well, it's a very long way to Moscow. Well, it will take two and a half hours by plane to Moscow, but you need to get to the airplane. And uh, sometimes there is so much snow that it's a big problem to get to the airport. So generally, it takes me ten, uh, eight hours door to door. So we arranged a nickel art residence there. It's uh, uh, accommodated in a secondary school building. So the, the school is empty. Well, because there are uh, there is a huge um, outflow of the local population. So the building uh, now houses several institutions. The first is the multifunctional center. The second, uh, the second floor is taken by uh, the um, children's center, and the third is our art residence. So international cooperation is is um, is there because Norway is so close. The local community around um, around the art residence uh, provoked, provoked certain clashes with our donor. So the kitchen and the art residence is open 24-7. So the uh, space of the art residence uh, is built around the kitchen. Artists were coming and cooking their food there. And guests were coming to, uh, to share meals with the artists. So we were arranging different kitchen events and everybody, everybody liked that. As far as I know, um, there are no um, well, cafes or places to drink tea in that uh, area. Some teenagers were coming to the art residence. And those teenagers who were coming to our art residence uh, then started traveling to Norway for uh, LGBT parades and started to feel much freer. So two years passed and we clashed with uh, our contractor as to whether the art residence should function 24 seven. Then the pandemic started um, and I decided that uh, I won't support the art residence, which cannot be attended by children and teenagers. So during our clashes, uh, the um, the local production facility was partly closed. And uh, well, uh, talks started about uh, the uh, changes. Um, towards a cleaner environment, cleaner air, and less pollution. 
But the point is that the heavy metals were still in the soil and there were uh, plenty of and there were plenty of um, um, slag heaps and uh, they look like huge black hills. So that was the moment when we distanced from our contractors. So we, as I, as I generally say, we had political differences with the contractor. So we opened our production center, which we call the Barents Home, the Barents Dome. By that time, we already had a set of international projects, and we realized that we could um, operate we could operate under um, less censorship. So we uh, arranged seminars, different meetings, artistic projects, together with our Swedish and uh, Norwegian colleagues. Of course, we missed uh, the art residents and the opportunity to cooperate with the local population. And we still had those teenagers who were asking us about when uh, another art residence would appear, and they were posting photos, uh, uh, telling us that Vera Petrova got the award from Zurab Tseritelli, uh, and well, she stayed with us here in our art residence. So Katya, who is responsible for fundraising and documents, uh, so together with Katya, we uh, we. Uh, we submitted the documents to uh, get the land lot. This is the land lot in the in the bay. So and across the bay uh, there is Norway. So there are salt lakes, but uh, in the rest of the world, uh, in, call this call this place uh, as fjords, and there are a lot of sea animals uh in that in those fjords um including um including seals so this is a beautiful place no road to the place you can only get there by sea well there is no like electricity there this is not a closed territory you can get there but you need to get a pass uh, a permission to get there. Uh, so the pass is issued for three years. So this is the house designed by Tihon Skrinnikov. It looks like uh, two sheds or two barns. And there is one more observation house, a kitchen. where we hope uh, we will be visited by the locals. We tried to uh, make this place look nice. Now we collect all doors. Anton, probably if you hear us, we would be happy to get the doors because now we need the doors. There are six uh, rooms, including a room uh, for, a family, for a family. We want artists to come with their children. And we also have a room for people with uh, special needs, with disabilities. So we continue the construction works. And I would like to, to sum up with the, follow, uh, mo with the following motto, the uh, Scandinavian motto. Um, be more moderate in what you do. And well, we hope to open up in 2023. And I hope that next year I will already be able to um, inform you about the dates. Thank you very much, Sasha. You stuck to the agenda 
and to your time slot perfectly yesterday we had a great discussion when we started talking about refusal forms when communications fail when uh, vision of those who make residences does not correspond to the owner owner's vision and this is a very painful moment for anyone because we all realize that if there is a single source of finance then the project is unsustainable and it's doomed to end at a certain point and it uh, applies to residences as well as to other cultural um, projects this is an inspiring example of how the connections appear connections that stay there for a long time Uh, can you say a few more words about where uh, your money comes from? That's my question number one. And then it's not a question, but a comment rather, but also about the community. In, in VIXA, there is a similar situation. And uh, those who work outside of major cities know, know that uh, if they ask people on the streets, what, what they want, uh, hardly anyone will say we want to have an art, uh, contemporary art center. There are not so many students here in Vixa, but there are teenagers, and we would like to involve them gently, because teenagers will soon be adults. And if uh, the, the people are not used to being beneficiaries of cultural events, well, because there, there was nothing like that in their youth, uh, well, there is nothing like that uh, when they have grown up. And why I believe that your kitchens helped uh, the, the guys to, to self-orientate, because the, uh, in this close community, uh, suddenly there is someone from, from an outside environment and you, do, you don't have uh, established relations with them and you can try to use a different mode of communication there that is not possible in a small town so this breaking the seal is uh, great so the first question is uh, quite complex we have an investor who is building a tourist uh, residence, it's a private company, small private company, micro business, I would say. But uh, this investor is very much interested in getting uh, his rich guests uh, to be entertained. And he helps a lot, but we also uh, have grants from the regional authorities for the tourism development. Uh, is Nornikil connected to subsidies in any way? Uh, no, they are not helping us so with this art residence, but we have never uh, asked them probably will be forced to at certain point. And as for your second point, our companion, our investor uh, has a few boats. And I don't see much trouble getting local population in and out. We would keep our doors open by all means. And we may have certain tools uh, around the barren sea, but it will be in a different format. Now, Katya wants to involve teenagers as uh, assistants to artists, but we are not there yet. Construction is still underway, right? Have you have you thought about provisions if there is? Nothing else there, literally. I, I'm talking about food, uh, medicine, 
I mean, uh, any infrastructure that is found in the smallest settlement. How, how would you call a doctor, for example? Well, we have a helicopter pad. You, you'll have your own chopper? No, but uh, there is an opportunity to, to call a helicopter, even emergency helicopter in the Murmansk region. But I believe it, 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 it may cost as, as much as $1,000 per flight in, in terms of the helicopter. I can't see how it's going to be viable economically. The exchange is off the mic. Into the microphone, please. I'm now working with teenagers uh, whom we are taking there on tours. Well, and all locations in our district are hard to get to. So there are no uh, hospitals there. All uh, touristic areas are remote and hard to reach. Well, we normally take out insurances for, for the guests. It's not uh, th that much. And the insurance includes uh, helicopter services, ambulance services, if someone is injured or falls ill. As for provisions and supplies, where we building things, there'll be a, uh, a tourism residence and Tourism in general is developing rapidly there. We don't like it, so we try to build our buildings farther away from them, so close to our investor, and there is now no one else around. And we agreed immediately that we will cooperate on all matters, including how his houses are going to look, and whether it's going to be in tune with what we build, because this will be uh, a point of attraction for his business. Well, obviously, you you, you should understand uh, how much a boat, a motorboat costs. But yet, it can be reached on foot. So if you can't go out to the sea, there are hiking routes It takes a while, but it's still possible. You can still uh, you can still have snowmobiles in the winter times. We've been asked uh, how much uh, electric power we are going to need. Nornikel invests twenty seven billion rubles in the Rubachi Peninsula. So I don't see much problem with supply. Tourism has been there for a while and everyone manages, even the smallest organizations, private businesses, they still cope. Thank you. Things become clearer now. Let's keep our discussion till the end. Indeed, we are all used to having residences in big cities, small towns, settlements, but now we realize that people live outside inhabited areas too. And, so, and some of them can live in extreme conditions. I would like to talk about another project. Danil Tkachenko, whom I know, whom I've known for a long time as an artist, and his capability to reach out to territories and offer uh, perspectives that were not accessible to us before. Remember of his restricted areas project that uh, baffles imagination and uh, takes a lot of travel to perform 
uh, today we're going to talk the Altai Biennial, his new community practices in various places. Karnei Bruskov will join him and we're going to have to need a video on the screen. Hello, Alisa, thank you for inviting me here. I got acquainted with many new people, which is great. My art practices have always been linked with uh, traveling, looking into the remote places in the Russia, Russian Federation and in the former Soviet Union. And at a certain point, I realized that the creation of a work is the most important uh, primary thing. And as an artist, I'm now more concerned about when you have been doing something for a long time, you get immersed into that, and uh, then you come up with a work that you exhibit. And I've always felt a certain distance between the spectator and myself, the artist. I've been thinking about how to make that distance shorter. And this brought me to realization that I would like to concentrate on creating experience rather than set myself a task uh, of creating a piece of work in the end. So I decided that it would, it would be great to invite the spectator inside this work for this experience to be lived through together and for new dialogues to be coming out of this uh, great experience because I view art as creating space for the dialogue and the first experience like that in Russia took place in Kaliningrad so please run the video I'll tell you more I came to Kaliningrad at the invitation of the local festival and each of my projects is always connected uh, to certain research. So I, st I studied old maps of Kaliningrad looking for the previous borders that existed and tried to locate them In the, in, the, in the physical space, I made a small research. So I discovered old maps and, discover, and found those borders in the field. All locals were moved away after the war. And, and post-Soviet people were placed there, which is reflected in the landscape. When you come there, there is a, a bizarre feeling that you find yourself formally in Europe, but content-wise, you are still in Russia. And this reflects strongly the identity of the post-Soviet person. And the, and the community, people who live in Kaliningrad ha, have always debates about their identity. Someone consider themselves Europeans, someone Kaliningradians, someone Russians, and uh, this discussion is ever ongoing. And it was something I was interested in working with. So we made an open call and attracted about 50 applicants, half of the locals and half of uh, people from all over Russia, Novosibirsk, Krasnoyarsk, Omsk. So there was a text about that project. And those who were interested in that, well, came over. And we jointly set out on a journey around the Kaliningrad region looking for the 
old borders, try to bring them out and mark them. At the end of the shooting, we had a big presentation at the local cinema theater where the local community and uh, journalists gathered and this project became a meeting platform for various ideas for various approaches we had a big discussion and this very meeting point meeting venue which was itself a work of art is a great outcome for my work i tried to imagine how people would react to what i was doing whether they would be interested in that whether they are going to be keen because the process is rather dull nothing happens you just go from place to place looking for something well it may seem um, very dull and boring but people got really enthusiastic about it felt the context that it became important and fascinating for them they got new experience i like this group cooperation too and i wanted to set up an organization that would arrange such practices in various locations and the next big practice is planned in the altai territory there'll be the altai biennial soon and each project is linked to researching the local context and by studying the communications with the local population it is something that we're, go we're going to do in the Altai territory hello my name is Karni Bruskov I will speak to you more about the Altai biennial so in 2020 there was this mythical story you know in the spirit of of, of altai in the geographical sense of eurasia at the cross-section of mongolia kazakhstan china and russia a point of attraction appeared you know it was the cradle of civilization which may have been programmed by this close community request of the local uh, contemporary art and we attempted to reach out to as many people as as we can all over the world to bring them over to the altai territory but then the pandemic struck which interfered with our plans first we were frustrated about that but then we realized that this communication and collaborative practices uh, that we started out were the key actions in the current context and this postponement of an important event for for a while is a key vector of today so Hence, we, we got this new territory, zero land, you know, virtual space. We had this new territory. So it stands along this Kaliningrad practice and practices in other locations. And a new form of biennial now came came out deprived of this uh, uh, fetish uh, penchant of this uh, anthrop anthropocentrism so the first biennial was about uh, steel and concrete 
there were 30 participants Minir Fatsmi, Sigur Ross, and other prominent artists. It was focused on the Stone Age and the proto languages that overwhelm us. A team was formed, and Danila was involved in the first chapter. And it so happened that curator will soon be appointed of the second project, and its topic will be announced. And both curators invited Danila to participate. This will be in the summer. Our structure appeared there, driven by the inspiration by, of, of the region, with 10 or 15 uh, passionate people who work on their specific areas of social application. And we have uh, our own hotels, pieces of land, and communities to, to work with. And at the junction of the original practices of the locals and collaborative attempts to do other things, you know, by the global population, I think the project will take off. It will take place this summer. And everyone's invited to participate because there is a wide infrastructure available there to, uh, that can accept lots of people. Thank you very much. We will gladly accept your invitation and we'll come over. Well, I think this project is important indeed. I'm always asked. How many art residences are there in Russia? I don't know. I've never calculated. The Association of Art Residences does the calculations, but okay. Well, we see now that there are art residences, such as a process, a process of touring around the territory. We have an art residence as a landlord that is isolated from people and is uh, linked to nature and animals uh, and uh, opens up new communication options and you already create uh, multiple layers where artists are offered are offered to work with the territory and to act as a linking element throughout er epochs and centuries. So it all depends on the format that we are ready to uh, apply. I don't think that the word art residence uh, applies to all of those formats, but the word hospitality is applicable indeed. And well, we, uh, we need to adopt people, we need to adopt our past and all the um, related aspects. And I really like this idea of collaborative um, art when people outside an art residence, people um, come together, uh, joined by an artist uh, to work at a particular territory. And this is just a mobile team, a mobile group. And um, well, you create uh, some uh, choreography for them. So in this case, participation is less formal than the procedure of choosing an uh, artist. I think this is a much more inclusive uh, participation format. And now I would like to move to, move to another topic. Our next speaker is an artist. I know her for a while already. And, um, well, she has been uh, uh, a resident of uh, Zara Art Residence, and uh, she is closely collected to um, Vuxa, 
so these were family residences Well, speaking about transgression and nature, now we also need to talk about an artist, uh, an artist that can change uh, well the format of art residences. So what are the hospitality prospects for an artist? This is what Helena Kovilin is going to tell us. Hello, hello everyone, thank you for inviting me. I would like to thank the audience for coming to listen to all of us. When I was looking at your presentation, I uh, wanted to show my own video made in Vladivostok, but well, it's too late already. I'm not so much interested in what uh, happened in the past. I always want to look in the future and I'm constantly in the process of um, assessing the present in order to understand uh, well what uh, the future holds for culture and art i'm always stemming from the whole from the entirety i'm always interested in different processes that take place in society political social cultural whatever processes there are and then i try to um, relate that to my inner self and then i answer the question how i myself would like to impact the situation so when i'm asked when I, when I was asked to speak about art residences i thought that although i visited um, a lot of them and i uh, traveled around the world and i have a lot to tell you but uh, together with you now, I would like to think about the art residences of the future. So that's why I have uh, come here. You see that everything changes so fast. And after the pandemic, it's not yet clear what the role of culture in our society. Uh, so I'm going to speak about the growth uh, growth zones, uh, about the cultural policy and the uh, arc zones. So what, uh, what is the art of the future? Where are we going to build or establish the art residences? So in my brief presentation, I will make an attempt to identify the role and the form of art residences in modern society and in the society of the future. This is generally what we start from. Our foreign colleagues mentioned uh, sustainable development and for myself I decided to clarify what sustainable development is. So the United Nations back in 2015 the UN General Assembly um, identified 17 uh, sustainable goals. So this is a huge document worked out by the United Nations. I'm not going to uh, go deep uh, into all those sustainable development goals. Well, this is an open, uh, this is open information. And after looking through those 17 goals, I tried to find out where art uh, uh, where art lies amid those 17 goals. Well, actually, there is no art as a separate sustainable development goal, but we still can try to insert art into some of those goals. So, um, well, there is something about uh, education there. Uh, so, 
it closely relates to art. I think, okay, we're not going to go deep into detail. My, uh, my aim is different. So let me share uh, the results of my own survey, of my own investigation that I have undertaken. So the global uh, uh, policy today is uh, much more important than local policies. So what is the transition mechanism? So um, I think the reason for that is that it happens through transnational um, organizations like the United Nations, And also there is one more organization, which is uh, UCLG, United Communities and Local Governments, established in Belgium uh, as the UN um, uh, agency. And their goal is to unite local governments, municipalities and communities. This is a very strong uh, agency. And um, having analyzed my international experience, I now understand that I've always uh, received grants, scholarships, visited art residences, and all those uh, cities and towns have been members of uh, the UCLG. And the UCLG branch um, was established in Russia in uh, in um, in 2018 and uh, well there are actually two branches uh, the one responsible for the Far East and those who are working in the Far East uh, this is basically that basically means that they were operating under the uh, UCLG uh, Far Eastern branch uh, one more branch is uh, the U uh, UCLG uh, Eurasian branch. And this year, this regional branch is, it, is, um, is presiding over the U, uh, U, um, UC, UCLG um, worldwide. So now Kazan is the center of this huge network. One more uh, term that I would like to introduce, and the term has come from the analysis of uh, the information that I have studied. In 2017, uh, the uh, Forbes magazine published a map of lands after the, uh, uh, the flood. And so one of the uh, topics discussed globally is that we are facing uh, this great flood, uh, the sea levels are growing, and soon, uh, well, we'll have no place to live. We will face another great flood. And Altai will be the territory that will survive. And according to the map, So subscribe to our Instagram because you will learn uh, about the uh, about the glacier meltings. Uh, you will be the first to learn about the glacier meltings. Well, uh, the sea levels have not yet go gone up, although glaciers do melt uh, melt away. So, uh, so probably uh, we are over concerned, but still, well, the tendencies persist. And uh, globally, uh, certain regions 
grow economy-wise depending on these natural climate changes. So according to this Forbes map, let me show it to you. This is only a piece of the map. This is Russia. This is what will be left of Russia. But we can, you can Google that and have a look at this map. This is something that we expect in the future. There is another map of the economic zones growth. And if you put it over this uh, great flood map, we will find certain growth zones. Uh, they are called the arc zones that will be left after the great flood. And there are so there are flood zones and flood and arc zones. So growth zones and decline zones. If we look at Europe, at the European territory, over the last two decades, uh, uh, NPPs are shut down, productions are shut down. So these zones that uh, are alert that will allegedly be, be flooded. There is no economic growth there right now already. But the growth zones, sometimes they're uh, referred to as offshore um, zones or safe haven zones. So these zones will, um, will persist after the Great Flood. OK, this is pure theory. So it turns out that we we all represent the arc zones. Wait, wait, we need to look carefully at the map. Uh, some areas around Murmansk um, are expected to persist as well. We need to look at the map in detail and be very careful about the spots that you choose for your art residences. I'm really sorry, the topic is serious indeed. Well, there is one more relevant trend that has emerged recently, well, just a couple of months ago, uh, the construction of new towns from scratch. It takes place globally. Uh, this is a town built not far from uh, Cairo in Egypt. Uh, two towns are built um, in uh, not far from Cairo. They even plan some space station there. This is expected to be a new capital of Egypt. And this is the defense ministry of Egypt here. So now it is being built. So if we look at this map, and at this town, uh, this town will will house all the administrative uh, facilities, and there will be another satellite town uh, where the um, uh, where the people working uh, will live. It will be for uh, the operating personnel. Um, a couple of days ago, uh, a couple of days ago, Elon Musk uh, presented his project of um, a town to be built on Mars. So, and towns will, will be built under domes. So there is budget calculated. So he made calculations how much it will cost to build such domed towns. So now let's think where we need to build our residences. So here, uh, here I wanted to make a stop because this is a uh, rhetorical question. Just a couple of uh, uh, a couple of notes to make. I mean, not only an artist but a curator. 
from my perspective, uh, the competences of an artist must be uh, expanded and must include certain um, scientific knowledge. So the artists of the future are the people who who are interdisciplinary experts and it's not enough for them to have only artistic qualifications. That's why now science art departments are now being set up at technical universities. So if the person has technical qualifications, uh, he understands what science art is much faster as compared to artists. That is why new residences of the future uh, well, must uh, be arranged in particular spots. And I've said we need to be very careful about selecting those spots. And to my mind, uh, they need to be uh, set up as autonomous uh, stations, autonomous places. This is it. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. We're supposed to to stop uh, agenda-wise. If you hurry for lunch, uh, please feel free to go. But I think it would still be great to make some exchanges. I would I would like to compliment Elena's talk with how I see it. Uh, Yulia Bychkova showed this morning slides about useful art, and I believe that this is a uh, doubtful and speculative term because uh, practical value doesn't have to be there when we make art. And even uh, when we ask ourselves about residences and why art, artists' presence is required, I always give my understanding that artist is not just something that he or she does. We may not have seen the situation until that artist uh, arrived at all. They can change uh, perspectives. They can choose what they look at. And this useful art is about what? The future comes because we make it close and all those vectors are calling for images. And we deal with images here. So thank you, Elaine, for taking our discussion to space. And now the, the discussion will be uh, most, most wide. Off the mic. It's off the mic. Please speak to the microphone. I've been listening to all of this and not so long ago in uh, Lenin Library I found an interesting edition of the 1957 entitled Certain Matters of the Volumetric Solutions of Structures on the Moon. So back in 1967, long before Elon Musk, those discussions were ongoing. So we on the one hand may be relaxed that all those drastic changes are not going to catch up with that with us so soon but on the other hand we keep coming back to that idea some people say that 
uh, Elon Musk has Russian origins and many blame him for making use of the Soviet ideas, Soviet developments. Science fiction is our reality already. I would like to add to Anton's story about ocean and glass. Uh, Japan would buy glass from R Russia. But instead, but rather than glass, in truth, they bought the crates, the wooden, the wooden crates, because the crates were made of cedar. I'm not sure whether the story is real. So essentially, they, they, they bought boxes, you know, wooden crates, rather than glass contained in it. I think that glass uh, doesn't have negative impact on, on the environment, even if it's dumped in the ocean. So uh, in Sakhalin, you see the small sands, uh, which is colorful because of that glass. But a question to Alexander, legally, does the residence belong to you? The residence belongs legally to the United Nations. And how, how long is it on foot from the nearest uh, settlement? About three hours, just three hours. Well, obviously, it will depend on, on the pace and, with, and the weather. Are you considering uh, routes on foot for the artists who want to? So it's not uh, very comfortable to to use uh, to walk on foot there with your backpack, but it's a common practice. If the sea is closed because of the storm or anything else, uh, tourists are normally sent home on foot, and then their belongings are sent uh, by aviation. And I would like to add a few more words about the economic model. We have a preliminary agreement with our Norwegian colleagues, our partners. So we uh, wanted to make use of those rooms throughout the year. That, that's going to help us meet the ends meet. This is something difficult. Seems very difficult, right? We should find the strength and resources. More questions? Then let's proceed with our discussion offline then, informally. Thanks to everyone.